हरे कृष्णा अमित प्रकाश हरे कृष्णा अवयो यस वेरी वेल गोवर्धन what can be done we are here tonight okay nam om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya utale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine namaste sarasvati teve gauravani pracharine nirvishesha shunya vade asatya dishtare jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nitananda Shri Advaita Kathatara Shri Vasati Kau Bhaktari Indra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada Shila Prabhu Pada Shila Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jai Hare Krishna Welcome Anil Welcome. Next time you're doing Sikirtan, Anil. Is that okay? How are you? <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Sure, we'll do. Do you know how to do Kirtan? But I, I can try. Well, next time. Now sure. We're done. Thank you. Thank okay. You. What shall we discuss tonight? Any suggestions? Any uh, topics? Prabhu. Yes. Yeah, sure. May I? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think a few days ago we had Gopash to me. Yes. So let us talk about uh, go go uh, Gopash to me importance and things. That, will that be okay? House. Okay. Gopash to me. Let's see what we find on Gopash to me here. a moment was calling up it was a database okay
Mm -hmm. Okay, this one. That's better, right? Okay. Let's share that screen with you. Um, share screen. Go pass to me. Go pass to me. Eight references. Eight references. From Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, we have something here. Okay. Why not? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shuklashtami Kartike Tu Smrita Gopashtami Buddhai Tat Dinat Vasudevo Bhut Gopa Purvam Tu Vatsapa Rituan Prabhu, Amrita Radhe Madhichi, welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Oh, Hare it's Krishna. nice to hear your voice. Long time. <laughs> How are you? Everything okay? Yes, Prabhu. We are moving our house. So yes. while packing, we are hearing from you. You're hearing. Okay. That is good. Hare Krishna. Anil had just your chest it because we had Gopashtami. We're reading or speaking a bit about Kapashtami. That will do. So here's a beautiful verse from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, The Killing of Deinuka. Anil, you want to read? The eighth lunar day. And if I'll stop you, then we'll talk a bit. Anil. Are you there, Anil? Oh, yes. I couldn't find this uh, mic. Are you mute? Okay, we'll read us a bit. And if I have to say something, I will stop you. Sure. Okay. The eighth lunar day of bright fortnight of month Kartika is Prabhu. Uh, this can I move this one second, please? Just one second. Uh, yes. Okay. How do I minimize it? Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, the eighth lunar day of bright fortnight of month of Kartika is known by authorities as Gopashtami. From that day, Lord Vasudev served as cow as a cowherd. Uh, served as a cowherd, whereas previously he had tended the calves. Okay, so that's important. That's important, uh, uh, Lord Krishna. Uh, I don't know up to what age, Amrita Radhimadachi. Do you know what age? Oh. Was it the Komara H 
where Krishna was given the responsibility of tending the cows. Before he was tending the calves, so small boys, small calves, that's all right. But coming yeah. to a big boy, <laughs> cows. Okay, I'm reading on the What do you say? What what age was that? I think Mr. Prabhu, uh, I'm not sure, yeah. but was it, it? I think it was the transition between Kumar and Poganda. That is around five. I'm not sure, Prabhu. Okay, so that was my feeling as well. Yeah, so I Kum think so. Kumara age is uh, up till what? Up till five. Five and then years. Five onward, yeah, five years and five. Uh, above five is uh, Poganda till ten. Then 10 to 15 is uh, Kishore and uh, yeah, you work is just 15 and above because Krishna never went above 16, I think. Now, I, are we saying Krishna was tending the calves when he was five years old and when he was just over mm -hmm. five, five years old, he was tending the calves? Well, that is a big feat uh, for a, <laughs> a small boy of five, six years. Whichever, we could find out uh, but um, yes, so the calves, and now he has given been given responsibility of the cows. Carry on, uh, Anil. Sure. The word, the word uh, "patai" indicates that Lord Krishna ble blessed the earth by walking on her surface with his lotus feet. The Lord uh, wore no shoes. Or no, uh, or other footgear, but walked barefoot in the forest, giving great anxiety to the girls of Vrindavan, who feared that his lotus feet would be injured. Yes, and there's a nice story in this regard. Maybe we come to that. I don't know. Uh, when Martha Yashoda, she. She said to Lala, I'll make you some shoes, sir. She was not only the cowherd girls were full of anxiety, Mother Yashoda was full of anxiety. Krishna is going to the forest and there are prigger bushes, sir, and there are uh, hard stones and all of that. And he goes barefoot and he may hurt his wonderful soft lotus feet. I fear, old boy. Lotus feet, very, very soft, and Krishna's uh, uh, lotus feet, even more soft. And so she said, I will, for your birthday, now you, probably a story fits in well here, now you will tend the cows. I will make you some slippers, some nice slippers. You don't have to walk barefoot and possibly hurt your feet. And also because it's very hot in the day, I'll make you an umbrella for your protection from the sun. And she made it and she wanted to give it to Krishna. Here are some soft shoes and here's an umbrella. Ritual. Yes, Prabhu, I just found out uh, this thing. It's written here uh, okay. that uh, like I messed up with the divisions of of age also. Like one is uh, one to five is Kumar or Balya, same yes, thing. Kumar. And six, yeah, above five, that is six to ten is Poganda. So we, I just mixed up uh, those things. And uh, uh, ten above to uh, less than sixteen is Kishore, and then Nava Yo Nava one <laughs> just after that. Fifteen years nine months is Krishna's eternal age, and here it is mentioned on the fifth birthday. I mean, fifth day, sorry, fifth year, sorry, fifth year, uh, when Ko uh, it was a transition between Komara and Poganda, that is Balya yeah. and Poganda. He, I mean, he started tending the uh, cows instead of the calves. Yeah. So, from just after five years old, he's tending the cows. Just see here. Of course, I have seen boys in Komara or Poganda. In India, they are very, they are not comparable to our spoiled children here in the Western countries. Uh, no, they are, they are roaming the land and they are very adept in any and everything. So 
if we think of oh little Krishna five years just over five years or, or just becoming six years he's tending the cows in India that is not astonishing here it would be astonishing so yes great so if, just at the junction of uh, Komara to Pauganda age, and then he was given the responsibility of the cows. And there were lots of cows. How many cows are nil did Nanda Maharaj have? Ooh, uh, I think uh, they were in thousands. Thousands? Do we know more? Amit, do you know? Return. Oh, nine lakh cows. Nine lakh. One lakh is hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Yeah. Nine lakh is nine hundred thousand. Wow, that seems to be fantastically a lot of cows. But Nanda March was a was a king of the cowherd. Cowherds. So nine hundred thousand cows and. They were so opulent. They had so much ghee and butter and yogurt and milk. They traded it in for jewelries and sapphires and diamonds and gold and all of that. And of course, they had to give some of it to Kamsa in Mathura. So the story goes, Krishna said, I cannot accept your shoes. Mata, I cannot accept your umbrella either, because how can I walk in slippers when my cows don't have any slippers? And how can I walk with an umbrella when my cows don't have any, any shade from an umbrella? Just see. Krishna is so much concerned about his cows. Here in the Western world, we think cows and humans, are, well, they're animals, and we are, have so much intelligence and so much developed. In fact, they're doing abominable things to cows. But Krishna loved his cows. And there is a verse, Namo Brahmanya Devaya, go! Brahmana Hichai Cha. Go, Brahmana Hichai Cha. First, go. The cows are mentioned, and then the Brahmins are mentioned afterwards. So, first the cows, and then the Brahmins. Oh, Krishna loved his cows. There's another nice story. And I thought we had our Govardhan Pucha. Maybe someone would make some marzipan cows. Well, that happened with Srila Prabhupada. They made some cows out of marzipan and then they gave him a cow when it came to eating. And Srila Prabhupada said, I don't eat cow. Just see. It was just in the form of a cow. It was marzipan. The form of a cow. And he said, I don't eat cow. Form is very important. Right? So we would not bite into a marzipan form of a cow. No, we should not. We can mix it up and make a ball and then eat it, yes. So form, I don't eat cow, he said. So anyway, so Krishna said, I can only accept ma, mata, the slippers and the umbrella. If you make slippers for all of my cows and you make an umbrella for all of my cows. How is that possible? Poor Mother Yashoda, my, has to make nine lakh of slippers and nine lakh of umbrellas. So while they talk like this and while Krishna spoke like this, it was in the presence of the cows. And the cows heard all that. And then the cows got... Uh, very much in anxiety. So at night, the cows went out of their stable. They were free to go, but normally they didn't do that. They stayed in their cow shed 
until the next morning when Krishna will take them out into the forest. So they went out and on the path to the forest, they trumbled all the harder stones with their hard hoofs. They trumbled it all to soft, soft sand. So Krishna will not hurt his lotus feet because he won't accept any slippers. So he will walk barefoot, just like his cows walk barefoot. So they pulverized all the stones and rocks on the path to the forest. And then they came back into the shed. So the cows have similarly so much love for Krishna, and Krishna has so much love for the cows. And we should note, if we develop love for Krishna, Krishna will reciprocate with that love, and he will express his love towards us. And it's a competition. Who loves more, the devotee or Krishna? So that is a beautiful story, very fit for Kopashtami. Text 2. Ritu and Prabhu, you want to read that? Or Amrita Radha Mataji? Yes, Prabhu, I'll, I'll read. Uh, yeah, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Tan Madhavo Venum Udirayan Rito Gopai Grenad Peace, Vayaso Valan Vitaha Pashun Puroshkritya Poshopyam Avishad Vihartu Kamaha Ushuma Karam Vanam. Translation by Shila Prabhupada. Oh, just it went. Oh, yeah. Thus, desiring to enjoy pastimes, Lord Madhava, sounding his flute, surrounded by cowherd boys who were chanting his glories, and accompanied by Lord Baladeva, kept the cows before him and entered the Vrindavan forest, which was full of flowers and rich with nourishment from the anim for the animals. Yes, here is something very nice which we had on Saturday. Uh, you missed that, Rituan Prabhu. It was a very nice Kopashtami and Govardhan Pucha celebration. And we came to the point we had a, a Govardhan hill, and the devotees walking around, and then Rashmi, she picked up one of Giriraj's cows, the bigger cow, and she walked in front, the cow in front, and uh, the devotee is behind, and we circumambulated Govardhan Hill, exactly as Krishna has done and Krishna is doing. He always keeps the cows in front, and uh, all the devotees behind, like when the cow hurt men, and uh, I mean, the, all the inhabitants of Rindavan moved to different places due to uh, so many demons disturbing. Then they loaded up their wagons, all their goods, and kept the cows in front, and in a big convoy, say, walked, and the women on the carts, and small boys also, children on the cart, and so on. But the point is, the, always we keep the cows in front. And also an interesting, uh, an interesting point uh, to highlight how important the cows is. Traditionally, in India or in Vedic culture, we have the cow shed just before coming to the entrance of the temple. The cow shed just before going to see the deity in the temple. Why? Because first, you greet the cows, you stroke the cows, you feed something to the cows, and then you go and see Krishna. So that is just to highlight how important the cows are. So here in this verse, we kept the cows before him and entered the Rindavan forest. Purport. Ritual. Yes, it's actually not. It's actually not. 
I don't oh, think yeah. so. It's a yeah, dense it's canto written under Maharaj has yeah. cast this purport and translation as well. Right. Srila Sanatan Goswami has explained the various meanings of the word Madhava as follows. Madhava normally indicates Krishna to be the Lord who is the con the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. This name also implies that Lord Krishna described the dynasty uh, described I'm losing the thing. No, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Descended. Descended in the dynasty of Madhu. Since the spring season is also known as Madhava, it is understood that as soon as Lord Krishna entered the Vrindavan, uh, forest, it automatically exhibited all the opulences of spring, becoming filled with flowers, breezes, and celestial atmosphere. Another reason Lord Krishna is known as Madhava is that he enjoys his pastimes in Madhu, the taste of co uh, conjugal love. Lord Krishna would loudly sound his flute as he entered the forest of Sri Vrindavan. Uh, thus giving inconceivable bliss to all the residents of his hometown, Brajadham. These simple pastimes of playfully entering the forest, playing on the flute and so forth were performed daily in the spiritual land of Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, that is... You have your hands up, Ritual? You want to say something? I'm sorry, proved by mistake. I think I'll lower it down. Okay. Uh, that is also significant. The creepers, the trees, the creepers, all the plants, the bushes, uh, they also, as we know in the spiritual world, everything is conscious. Everything. So they also reciprocated with Krishna's love. And we heard as well, then when Krishna plays his flute, all, every, everything, and everyone becomes ecstatic. The Jamuna, when Krishna became so much stunned and overwhelmed, the Jamuna flowing upstream. Have we ever seen that? No, in this material sphere, we cannot see. A river always flows downstream. But when Krishna plays his fruit, the river flows upstream. And all uh, animals uh, which move about, they became stunned and became just like a statue, like the cows with the ears erect. Normally in India, the cows have these floppy ears down. No, when Krishna plays his fruit, the ears are pointing upwards to catch the sound of Krishna's flute playing, and they become stunned. And while the cows were eating grass, and as soon as Krishna plays his flute, they just like a statue with some half-eaten grass in their mouth, and just froze, completely froze from the Krishna's venu. And the calves who have taken milk from their mothers, they also became stunned. And the milk is tripping out of the corner of their mouth. So in this way, the moving living entities became stunned. And the not moving living entities and the stones and the rocks became liquefied. And it's just nature completely in the opposite by Krishna's flute playing. So... They do reciprocate with Krishna's love, the forest, flowers. And when Krishna walks in the forest, the bushes full of flowers, they're bending down. They're bending down their branches to touch Krishna's lotus feet. So these are different relationships. Uh, we know the more passive relationships, and we know the relationship as dasya, as servant, and we know the relationship as 
sakya, as friend, as vatsalya, as parental mood and madhurya, as relationships between lover and beloved. So one can engage in any of these relationships with Krishna. Today I sent out a text, I don't know if you have read it, which is also very, very important. But Srila Prabhupada urges the devotees to come off the Kanishta or Prakrita platform. So that is the lowest stage of devotional service. And he explained following the rules and regulations, this is uh, the first step in devotional service. But one has to go further, at least come to the Madhyama platform. Because on this Kanishta platform, first of all, we're causing so many offenses. Kanishta means we see the Lord in the temple only, but not outside the temple. So generally, devotees on that Prakrita or Kanishta platform, sometimes also said materialistic devotees. The actual Srila Prabhupada explains they're not actually devotees, but because they're trying to be devotees, they are counted towards the devotees. But that's the lowest level of devotees on the Kanishta platform. Uh, so on that platform, one just sees Krishna in the temple. And out of the temple, they're starting quarreling with other devotees and other people. So that is a symptom of that Kanishta platform, only recognizing Krishna in the temple, in the Murti, Shishi Radha Madhava, Shishi Radha Govinda, Shishi Radha Gopulananda, and so on. But outside, they're fighting, not seeing that Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. What to speak of his devotees? So the Madhyama platform, the middle platform, more advanced devotional service, such a devotee sees all living entities. He sees the innocent people. He sees the atheist and he sees Krishna in everyone's heart. On that platform, one will not fight with other devotees or with other living entities for that matter because one can see the super soul. We have that beautiful verse, uh, what's that verse? Who can recite that verse? Uh, where the Lord says, uh, a wise and learned devotee sees with equal vision a cow, an elephant, a cow, a dog, and a dog eater. And there's this beautiful picture in Bhagavad Gita as well, in original Bhagavad Gita, with a super soul in all of them. Who, who knows that verse? And translation? Uh, uh, a pandit or a person, a learned person sees uh, everybody equally, be it a cow, be it a uh, Brahmana be the uh, lowest of uh, the Varnashrams, that is uh, uh, the dog eaters. And the Hashtini. And Hashtini. And elephant. Elephant. Yes. 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 So that, that is very significant. On that Madhyama platform, one can realize that. And uh, seeing Krishna in the heart of every living entity and in everything, that's a very advanced uh, platform. But we have to come to that platform, Srila Prabhupada says. Actually, uh, devotional service, real devotional service, is spontaneous love for Krishna. That is real devotional service. Anything before is uh, following the rules and regulations, which is important. Which is important. Scriptural injunctions are very important. But it is also an offense to follow the rules and regulations for the sake of following the rules and regulations. Sometimes the word is falling in this category. So forget why the rules and regulations are there. We're speaking about the four regulative principles, but we're speaking about the rules in deity worship. So how many rules and regulations of worshiping the deity? From Achman to Sis to that. So many. 
So sometimes the world is forgetting why these rules and regulations are there. And they're just following because there are rules and regulations. But all the rules and regulations have a purpose to get us at least to the mode of goodness from which we can go to Shuddha Sattva, to pure goodness. In this material world, even goodness is not pure. There's always a tinge of passion and ignorance. That pure Shuddha Sattva is only found in the spiritual platform. So Srila Prabhupada urges devotees to be sincere and to move to the higher level, at least to the Madhyama platform. We're not speaking about the Uttama, topmost platform. That is a different story. But at least to the Madhyama platform. And Madhyama platform means compassion. And compassion means preaching. Without preaching, there cannot be compassion. Compassion means to enlighten other living entities to wake up to their real relationship with Krishna, to help them, to awaken them. That is compassion. And to awaken them, that is called preaching in many different ways. So if someone doesn't feel enthused by preaching, well, he is not on the Madhyama platform. He's on the Kanishta level, where one doesn't feel he has enough knowledge, first of all, and he doesn't feel that spirit of wanting to, of giving compassion to other living entities to help them. Because without any Krishna consciousness, they will just, just go to hell. So we'll just stay in this material world eternally. We must make them fortunate. That is Lord Shaitana's mission and the devotee's mission to make everybody fortunate, to take to Krishna consciousness. So therefore it is important to get away from the Kanishta level as soon as possible, because so many offenses are committed to us the devotees, which weighs one down and to come at least to that Madhyama platform and to see with equal vision, that beautiful verse, which Ritwan Prabhu just recited, and then come to the spontaneous platform. That is real devotional service, spontaneous. One is motivated by, by love for Krishna, by affection for Krishna, not by the rules. Of course, one will follow the rules to give a good example. Because if the more advanced devotees, they don't have to follow the rules, they follow the rules automatically by uh, loving Krishna. But if they give not so good examples, then others will, will not follow them. Okay. Where did we stop, Rituan? So we uh, completed the second uh, verse. Okay. okay, thank you. Anything needs to be said more about this purpose and verse? Yeah, Anything? That's all. Wonderful explained. Let's go to text three. Amit, read. Slowly, break it down, the long words. Ready? Tan. No, we can't hear you. Your microphone is on, but we can't hear you. Amit, are you muted or unmuted? Now you're muted, unmuted. What happened with your microphone? Oh. 
Okay, Anil. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Um, Tan Manju Gosali Mraga Dvija Kulam Maha Mahan Mana Prakriya Paya Sarvata Sarvasvata Saraswata Saraswata Yeah Vate na Jastam Sat Patra Gandina It's actually Shatta Oh, not Sat Patra No, S is a slash Shatta Satra Satra Gandhena Nirikseya Rantum Bhagavan Mano Dadhe. Of course, we could put that into a proper melody, which is a bit more challenging, like Tanmanchuko Shalimriga Tvichakulam Mahanmana Prakya Paya Saraswata. Vatena chushtam shatta patra gantina nirikshya rantum bhagavan manodate. That we should actually do that. Otherwise, it's just reading. Very, yeah. Translation, Anil. Translation. Okay, the Supreme Personality of God had looked over the forest, which renowned with resounded uh, with the charming sounds of bees, animals and birds, and which was enhanced by a lake whose clear water resembled the minds of great souls, and by a breeze carrying the fragments of hundred petaled lotuses. Seeing all this, Lord Krishna decided to enjoy the auspicious atmosphere. Okay, what? why you think is there a comparison that the clear waters resemble the mind of great souls. Yes, sir. I was I was actually taken with the, this is a beautiful uh, yes beautifully way of you know making a point that mind. So explain mind is as it's it's amazing. The mind has to be as good as clear water if you can see. That means it's abs- absolutely no contamination uh, of material. Uh, Existence. Yes. Okay. Clear water. What? What else? Anything else? Okay. Uh, clear. Mind. was a breeze carrying fragments of hundred petaled lotuses. No, no. We uh, let's stay here. We said example of the so water resembled the mind of great souls. Okay. Uncontaminated. Clear. So water is clear. The minds of great souls are clear. Anything else? In comparison, resemble the minds of great souls. I I cannot put my, I cannot uh, figure. Okay, uh, Rituan, any anything comes to mind? Uh, Prabhu, just uh, what Anil Prabhu said, uh, like uncontaminated, free from any material desires. Okay, uh, fully fixed. Uh, yeah, like unperturbed. By material desires like sthita pragya, not uh, yeah, not flinching with any other material desires. It's like just like you know, the water still remains still and clear. Ah, ah, ah. that's that's a point I want to hint at. The, the water is still tranquil, right? No waves. Sir. It's just it's just a clear mind uh, water in those lakes. So. In the same way, the great souls, they also have a tranquil mind, a peaceful mind. It's not agitated by material desires. Our mind is agitated by material desires as if uh, a strong wind is blowing, sometimes blowing from this side, sometimes blowing from that side. So then the water becomes choppy. If there is a storm in the sea or in a lake, then the water becomes very choppy. It's not clear, it's not tranquil, it's not peaceful. So the mind is just like that. Srila Prabhupada made a statement, very interesting statement. 
uh, sense gratification is, uh, what is the word? Uh, it doesn't come to mind. It's a, it's a creation, more than a creation. They, the word doesn't come to me right now. It's a creation of the mind, right? Any sense enjoyment is a creation of our mind. Nothing else. The desire arises in the mind. Where does it come from? The desire arises in the mind. Because of prolonged contact with the material energy, we have developed the desire to lord it over material energy, to try to enjoy material energy. But that's all a creation of the mind. And we have been in contact with the material energy. We have been trying to uh, enjoy this material energy, our senses, for innumerable millions and millions of lifetimes. So now we come to Krishna consciousness and we try by regulative principles and by the chanting process and by any devotional activities to calm the mind. And if we calm the mind, then many things will happen in our spiritual life. And the mind will eventually become tranquil like that lake we just heard about. So it's all in the mind. And how to control the mind, to make the mind one's best friend rather than one's worst enemy. Worst enemy means the mind is suggesting all kinds of abominable activities in thinking, in willing, in feeling. These are activities of the mind, thinking, feeling, and willing. First is the thinking, and then the feeling comes. We feel, uh, oh, that would be nice if I do this. And then so willing, I want to do this, and we know from Bhagavad Gita also that uh, by m contemplating the objects of the senses, one develops attachment. At least there we can stop. It might be difficult to stop the mind by contemplating the object of the senses. And that can also be done. We don't need to. Uh, increase the contemplation of the object of the senses. Okay, switch on the TV. Watch some nonsense. Oh, yes, increase the, uh, the contemplation on the object of the senses. Then don't be surprised. You become attached to it. And from attachment, lust develops. That's even a step further. Attachment. There we still can... <laughs> Or before the attachment, we can cut it off. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said, when Maya comes, what shall we do? When the illusory energy tries to steal her way into our mind, chant loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then by having Krishna's name and focusing the mind on Krishna, the material energy will disappear. Maya will disappear. But we, we like to. Contemplate the objects, enjoyment in the mind. Everybody likes enjoyment in the mind. And we think, well, I, I can control it. I can control it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. To contemplate a little bit too much, too long, we become attached and then we lusting after. We have to do it. Once the lust is manifested, then we have to do it. We have to do it. There is not much we have to to put that put something in the way. And then when we cannot fulfill our material desires, then anger arises. And from anger, uh, bewilderment uh, and illusion, bewilderment of memory, and then intelligence is lost. And before we know, we are again, materially attached. Even so, we try to be devotees and keeping unattached from this material energy and by 
not being careful for a moment, we Maya has a grip on us again. And we acting in a sinful way. We're breaking principles or we Srila Prabhupada says anything, actually anything which is not for the pleasure of Krishna is sinful. We may think sinful means just certain activities or breaking or illicit sex or uh, intoxication, meat eating. <laughs> These are sinful activities. But Srila Prabhupada says anything which is not for the pleasure of Krishna is sinful. How come? Because we're becoming thieves. And we have recently had a nice class where Srila Prabhupada spelled it out. We want to act in favor of Krishna, not in our favor. Right? Acting in our favor means sense gratification. <coughs> One moment. And acting in Krishna's favor for Krishna means devotional service. And the example is given, Arjuna acted in his favor. I don't want to fight. No, how can I enjoy the kingdom without all my relatives? Naturally, we want to. Any enjoyment we want to enjoy with our family together, with our friends, with our acquaintances. Enjoyment alone is not very enjoyable. We may have all the possibilities of enjoyment, anything and everything we want, and we are the only person on this planet Earth. How boring is that? We want to share our enjoyment with others. So, we are we are acting in our favor. We are stealing. We are thieves. Because we are enjoying or trying to enjoy Krishna's material energy without giving credit to Krishna. We, it's just not much different from taking our neighbor's car, nice sportive car, and we think, I'll take this car without a second thought that, and let me drive around the block. We are thieves. We can do that. It doesn't belong to us. A neighbor's car belongs to the neighbor. And if we take that car, we are a thief. And the material energy belongs to Krishna. And without uh, asking Krishna's permission, without giving credit to Krishna, we are a thief, just like taking the neighbor's car. We take Krishna's car. We take Krishna's material energy. But we think, unfortunately, oh, that is that is for us to enjoy. This material world is here to enjoy. I'm born in this world to enjoy my senses. No, not at all like that. Misconception. We are in this material world to take Krishna's energy and offer it first of all to Krishna. And then we take the remnants, and then we enjoy. That's a proper process. Not just without any gratitude and out any, out any thought. We just taking Krishna's energy. We stealing. We are thieves. So therefore, if we don't anybody who is not acting in devotional service, that is sinful. That was Srila Prabhupada's statement. Now we have to be very careful. We might think we are good people. We're doing good deeds. But we might be doing pious deeds, but at the same time we're doing so many sinful deeds as well. It's a mixture. Mixture. We cannot without, without doing sinful activities. It's mixed in, except we are fixed in devotional service for Krishna. Recently someone wrote to me, uh, one can be a good person without God. No, without religion, he said. One can be a good person without religion. 
And I wrote to him, you might be able to be without organized religion, but you cannot be without Krishna. I was expecting to get some some response on that, but he didn't. By now he he knows we cannot be without Krishna. Every breath, every morsel of food, all is based on Krishna. Like Srila Prabhupada, uh, the devotees that must have been in New Vrindavan, they said, we approaching the farmers, New Vrindavan, there is lots of farming communities around, farmers, we approaching the farmers, but they saying they don't have time for that, they're working so hard. That could apply to us as well. Well, as we come to come to the temple, come for Govardhan Puja, chant 16 rounds, at least, at least 16, minimum. And we, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. So, in another class, Srila Prabhupada explains, they're saying, well, we're approaching people, we are busy, we don't have time. And they're eating two pieces of toast and a cup of tea. And when they're very accumulating money, counting some money at night, out of a thousand dollars, I have made two thousand dollars, but still, say, eating two pieces of toast and one cup of tea. So what's the benefit? What's the benefit of all that? So we have to take devotional service very serious. And it's not that difficult. There is a process which we can follow. And we must always stay in the association of devotees. Otherwise, our inspiration will disappear and the material inspiration will be there. Let's read a bit more. Herbert. Amit. Is your Zoom working now? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, yes, you can hear me now, yeah? Yes, what happened? I'm not sure. Probably, I'm not sure. I think, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know if my microphone setting changed. Okay, but, start. But Lord Krishna. Me. Okay. <clears throat> Lord Krishna saw that when... Vindavan, Vindavan forest was given pleasure to all five senses. <clears throat> the bees, birds, and animals made charming sounds that brought sweet pleasure to the ears. The wind was faithfully rendering service to the Lord by blowing throughout the forest, carrying the cool moisture of the transparent lake and thus giving pleasure to the sense of touch. By the sweetness of the wind, even the sense of taste was being stimulated, and the fragrance of lotus flowers was bringing pleasure to the nostrils. And the entire forest was endowed with heavenly beauty, which was giving spiritual bliss to the eyes. Sri Vishwanta Chakravati Takara have thus explained the significance of this verse. What a beautiful atmosphere. What a beautiful description. Everybody would love to go on holiday and to have uh, enjoying in this way as is described here. Unfortunately, in the material world, that is hardly possible. There might be some places where everything seems to be perfect for a while until things turning sour again. Because we think we are the only people there in that place and a um, hundred other people 
thinking the same thing and everything gets spoiled. But what a beautiful atmosphere of the lakes and uh, different senses are stimulated. That is Vrindavan. Never ending, always available in the presence of Krishna and the great souls. Anyone has any questions so far or comment? Amrita Radhimadhiji? Anything? No problem. Anything to add to this beautiful description? Mm. Okay. No. Let's take it one further. Anil. No, let's let's have uh, Amit reading the Sanskrit. Ready, Amit? I don't think my probably my Sanskrit is not that good. I don't think. It yes. Takes time. Your Sanskrit is sufficient. I don't speak it naturally. You see. <laughs> naturally, who speaks it naturally? I don't speak it naturally. <laughs> Rituan <laughs> speaks it quite naturally. <laughs> no problem. I also don't know and don't know Sanskrit. <laughs> it's like yeah, so. hearing from other versions. <laughs> But by reading and practicing and reading again and reading again and memorizing and uh, remembering some verses and we improving gradually. We don't want to become Sanskrit scholars. That is not, that's not the idea. Some people are very good in Sanskrit, but they don't understand the philosophy. So that's understanding, true. sir, philosophy yes. Is much more important. No problem. I may struggle in this lifetime, Prabhu, but next time, life, lifetime, maybe I'm a scholar in. in next Sanskrit. time, lifetime, you don't want to come back, Amit. You never know, Prabhu. I don't know. I don't want to come back, but it's a, it's a gamble, isn't it? It's what? A gamble. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you don't want to come back, and you have to make endeavor. You have to. Be very determined of not coming back. Because coming back, you, as you yourself explained, in an advanced Kali Yuga with climate catastrophe and wars and turmoil and so many horrible things going on, you really want to come back in such an atmosphere? No, we don't. Maybe want to probably just to save the world, just like Krishna did. Save the world. Well, you can save the world, but you need to become spiritually very, very strong. You need to become a pure devotee. A pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, he can save the world. Yes, no doubt. But either saving the world or not coming back, some significant advancement in Krishna consciousness needs to take place. Now you're chanting 16 rounds. Keep it up. Never, never miss it. And if by extraordinary circumstances you're missing three, four rounds, you can't finish, then you need to catch up next day. You know about that, right? If you miss a round, we're catching up next day. It's true, Prabhu. Prabhu, I, I chant 16 rounds and I work for an animal rights organization. I've never been so Krishna conscious in my life, all my life. Say it again. You mm. never? I work I work for an animal rights organization. Okay. I almost literally, I think, hopefully I do con good Krishna consciousness all day. <laughs> yes, important it is to do Krishna consciousness all day in a conscious way. Right? In a conscious, being completely conscious of Krishna all day. That is important. Like yeah. Krishna says, always think of me. So we shouldn't, because we can do animal rights work and forgetting Krishna. Can be said. But the challenge is to do whatever work, 
cease work, set work, animal rights work, and remembering Krishna. That is that is a challenge, constantly, 24-7. Then spiritual progress will be very quick. We may be a doctor in the hospital. We may be an animal rights campaigner. We may be uh, whatever we are. But uh, the point is to always remember Krishna. So, okay, last verse. Okay, Prabhu. Sa tatra tatra runa palava chriya pala prasunuru barena pada yo. Rishak. Rishak. Chikan viksya vanasat patin muda. Samnayan. Eva Agra Jam Adi Purasa. Yes, not too bad. Come on. Nice. Translation. <clears throat> the primeval Lord saw that the stately trees with their beautiful reddish buds and the heavy burden of fruits and flowers were bending down to touch his feet with the tips of their branches. Thus he smiled gently and addressed his elder brother. Who is the elder brother, Amit? Lord, his elder brother is Lord Balarama. Balaram, yes, Lord Balaram. That's the elder brother. So here we have exactly what I touched on it earlier on. Said, sir. Uh, the bushes, trees, they're bending their branches to touch the lotus feet, the feet with the tips of their branches. So Lord Krishna is very pleased that he said devotional service, You're touching his feet with the branches. So he smiled. And he speaks to Balaram. Let's see what he says. Purport Amit. <clears throat> the words Muda Samyan Eva indicate that Lord Krishna was in a joking mood. He knew that the tree was actually bowing down to worship him. But in the following verse, the Lord speaking in a friendly, light-hearted mood, gives the credit to his brother, Balaram. Yes, so Krishna is choking also, particular with his brother Balaram, or with the cowherd boys. They're doing a lot of so-called frivolous activities and choking. And um, yes, he gives the credit to Balaram. Even he knew exactly that the trees were bending down to his lotus feet. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Aho Ami Deva Varam Architam Padam Bucham Te Sumana Sumana Palarhanam Namantya Upadaya Shikabir Atmanas Tamo pa pahatya taru chanma yat kritam. So you see, I'm also struggling with that Sanskrit. Not that easy, these long verses. Bhagavad Gita is much easier. Translation. The Supreme Personality of God had said, O greatest of lords, Balaram, just see how these trees are bowing their heads to your lotus feet which are worshipable by the immortal demigods. So trees are offering you the fruits and flowers to eradicate the dark ignorance that has caused their birth as trees. So well, that gives us a few, a few points here. To be taking birth as a tree is generally understood to be in the mode of ignorance. Because trees, they cannot move. 
so stationary for hundreds of years, and they have to stay in uh, rain and cold and scorching heat. So that is a manifestation of the mode of ignorance. So if we don't cultivate our Krishna consciousness in this lifetime, and we sink into the level of passion and even more down to the level of ignorance, then in the next lifetime we have all chance of taking birth as trees and plants and bushes and so on. That can happen. Uh, so Krishna likes to give credit to others. From the Bhagavad Gita, what do we know about giving credit to others? What do we know? Rituan. The Lord giving credit to others. He enjoys giving credit to others. Mm. So is it that, I mean, uh, that Krishna actually did everything, The uh, I mean, uh, but he gave his credit to his pure devotee, Arjuna? Absolutely. Krishna likes that. He likes to give credit to his devotees. Even so, he is actually doing everything. And uh, still, he likes to give credit to his devotees. So, what else? Prabhu, I have one question regarding the previous verse. Okay. I mean, uh, the trees were bowing down. So, uh, in the text, it is written is bowing down. Uh, but, I mean, Krishna and Balaram are, are the same. Like, Krishna, Balaram is the first expansion of Krishna. They are like, they are uh, both the same, uh, uh, same Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes. Uh, so, uh, like, you know, Prabhupada explains in the part that uh, the trees are bowing down to the lotus feet of Krishna only. Uh, so, I was thinking, like, whether, like, you know, the trees could be bowing down to both of them, isn't it? <laughs> because both of them are the same Supreme Personality of God, one just Krishna and one his first expansion, and there is no difference between them. Yes, but the text tells us that they were bowing down to Krishna. <laughs> Not to Balaram, <laughs> but Krishna, he says, look, Balaram, they're bowing down to you <laughs> because they're walking side by side, Krishna and Balaram, so it's difficult to see. But Krishna knew they were bowing down to him, but he said, oh, Balaram, look, they're bowing down to you. <laughs> he wanted to glorify his, his dear most Balaram, that's all. If the Text says, the Bhagavatam says, they're bowing down to Krishna. That's it. Yes, they're both the same, but they're also different at the same time. Different. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Whether the, I mean, I forgot, I mean, I overlooked the translation, whether the translation was saying it's only to uh, Krishna or uh, that, that's, that one I missed, I think. Yeah. Well, if it wouldn't be to Krishna, then that verse which we just discussing now wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. But, right? Then why would Krishna say, actually, they're, they're bowing down to you, Balaram? Okay, let's read that purpose. Maybe that gives us a little bit more uh, clarity on that. The so trees of Vrindavan were thinking that because of past offenses, <laughs> they had now taken birth as trees, and being immovable, could not accompany Lord Krishna in his wandering throughout the Vrindavan area. So would have liked to go, like the cowherd boys, go with Krishna everywhere, but they couldn't. In fact, all the creatures of Vrindavan, including the trees and cows, were great souls who could personally associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So what I said before, generally, uh, trees are the mode of ignorance, but not in Vrindavan, not in the spiritual world. That is different. They were great souls who could personally associate with the Supreme Lord. But because of ecstatic sentiments of separation, the trees considered themselves in ignorance and just tried to purify themselves by bowing down at the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram. So here we have both. 
at the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram. Lord Krishna, understanding their mentality, simultaneously glanced at them with affection and praised their devotional service before his older brother Balaram. Hare Krishna. Any questions? That's the last verse we read today. It started with Gopashtami, but it has beautiful descriptions of the spiritual world of Goloka, Vrindavan, and all the beautiful descriptions. If you can manage, read on the 10th canto and, or read Krishna book, all the beautiful descriptions of the forest of Vrindavan and the, the creepers uh, on the trees producing so many beautiful flowers and the path is uh, paved with gemstones and rubies and uh, sapphires and so on. That is Vrindavan. Not just stone and granite and mud and no, beautiful spiritual world. Pleasure to all the senses. Any questions? Anil. Ridwan, you want to say something? No, I just say like, yeah, like, you know, my question was answered by Shri Prabhupada in this purport. Yes. <laughs> this going down before both Krishna and Malala. Yes, here we go. Yes. Thank you. Anil, question. One more question. No, Prabhu, this is fine. The, the descriptions come, up. Are... come up with a question. Come on, there must be questions. Asking question is a sign of intelligence, Srila Prabhupada says. <laughs> no, be intelligent. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but it has to be like natural. Uh, I can't think of uh, any other moment. I'm not being intelligent at the moment. The, the best question, or really the only question, is are ah, questions which can help us of furthering our devotional service to the Lord. Practical oh, yes. questions, not yes, yes, and God will. And it's not a question, but it's a command. It's uh, okay. Okay. something that I heard in Katha Prabhu uh, about uh, because this has uh, started the go to me. Uh, about cows, I think I'll have to look this up and we'll talk about it next uh, week uh, or probably Saturday. Uh, in in Mahabharat, uh, there, is a, there is a description given by cows themselves about their own names in various uh, planetary systems. Like what are they called in, uh, in Brahmaloka and what are they called in Janaloka, Taplo, you know, Taploka. Mm -hmm. And Swarga Loka and uh, and and uh, Uber Lok, various Lokas. Uh, that I'll have to look that up. That was a, that was I was thinking about it. A beautiful sloka where cows are giving their own uh, names to be chanted. And they say if you are amongst cows and if you chant our names, these these seven names, uh, we forgive by by doing that we forgive sinful reactions of God knows how many years, uh, how many lifetimes. I'll, I'll, I'll look that up, actually. Yes, just yes. About it. Krishna's cows, they all have names. And Krishna knows all the names of the cows. And there is a beautiful pastime in Kert Kadamba. It's a little kund with Kadamba trees surrounding it. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. Close, not too far away from Vrindakund, which our Dina Bandhu Prabhu has made such a, a, a wonderful pilgrimage place of. So this Tegadamba, Krishna in the evening is sitting on a tree and he calls his cows by name. And they're coming one by one and Krishna touches their nose with his flute. And the cows enjoy that greatly. So in, cows enjoy being called by Krishna, by their own name. And in that way, Krishna counts the cows, make sure nobody is left behind. But there is one cow. She didn't come. Chandravali. 
And she heard Krishna calling, but she didn't come. And Krishna again, Chandravali, come. And again, she heard her name, she didn't come. And again, Krishna called Chandravali. Why didn't she come? Because she liked Krishna calling her name three, four times. Uh, and uh, it's a most beautiful experience. Can you imagine, Anil, if Krishna calls you, Anil, Anil, what are you doing? Come here, Anil, come to me. <laughs> it's a beautiful experience. So in this way, Krishna was counting the cows and called them all by name. So there are so many nice pastimes in uh, Tekadamba. And of course, that one beautiful pastime, you may have heard it, maybe not you, Anil, where one Baba, and that is not so long ago, quite contemporary, one Baba, he was serving his entire life at Tekadamba. He was a Puchari. He, uh, he worshipped the deities there. In, what, what deity in Kerka? Tekadamba, Krishna, and Balaram. Beautiful deities. If you go to Tekadamba, you see beautiful, medium, small size Krishna and Balaram deities. So he was serving them and uh, he was making the garlands for them day in, day out. Simple sadhu. He just had a, a chata and a kamadalu, a, a pot, and that's it. That was his only possessions. But one day, he thought to himself, Krishna is not reciprocating with me. I'm doing so much seva. For 50 years I've been doing seva, but Krishna is not reciprocating with me. I shall go to Varshana, which is just a little bit away. One can see on the hill, Varshana, Radharani's birthplace. I can go to Varshana, Radharani is more merciful. And then there were there are always some boys. What he used to do, he took off in the evening the garlands from the deities and he distributed the garlands to the boys and they loved it. They took the garlands and hung it around their neck and playfully played and with the garlands and so they enjoyed that very much and they were they were concerned. Baba, if you go to Varshana, who will give us the garlands? We have no gardens. Please stay here. And he said, no, I I don't get any mercy from Krishna here. I'll go to Vaishnava Radharani is more merciful. What mercy are we talking about? We're talking some ecstatic uh, feelings of uh, reciprocation with the Lord. We're talk, talking about spontaneous devotional service. We're talking about ecstatic emotions. This is a nectar. This is a chew. So he was complaining. I don't get any mercy from Krishna. Let me go to Varshana and Radharani is more merciful. And the boy said, no, no, stay here. He said, no, no, I go. And he packed his things. Well, packed his things, his chatter and his, his water pot. <laughs> That's all. And he started to walk to towards Vaishnava. And the boys behind called him, Baba, Baba, stay here, don't go away, stay here. Go. And then at one point he turned around to the boys. What did he see? Krishna and Balaram in all their opulence and glory with his garland he made around their neck there stood Krishna and Balaram. So he got some mercy and he fell in ecstatic trance. He fell down on the floor and he trembled and he was completely overwhelmed by the vision of Krishna and Balaram. So normally he has gone once a day to Nandakram, which is also close by, uh, Nanda Maharaja's palace. And he did some madukari there. He begged some chapati from one house and a bit something from others, a bit milk. 
and said how he maintained himself. Sadhus are allowed to do that. Householders are not allowed to do that. They have to work. But sadhus, they're back. So when he didn't come, the Baba, to Nandakram, because he has never, this was a regular schedule to come to Nandakram and back some chapatis, then the, the people of Nandakram became concerned. What happened to Baba? What happened to him? He didn't come. Maybe he's ill or whatever. So he says, send a few boys from Nandagram down to find out, check out what's happened to Baba. He hasn't come today. He hasn't uh, done his madhukari. When the boys came, they saw Baba on the floor in ecstatic trance. And they say, Baba, Baba, what happened? What? And then he related the entire story that he wanted to go to Nandakram, and the boys said, no, stay here. And then he turned around, and there were Krishna and Balaram. It's a full opulence and glory. And then, with this word on his mouth, he left his body, back home, to Goloka, to the spiritual world. And from these boys, that how we know that story. Hare Krishna. Well, these things are all real. We Engage in devotional service in due course of time, Srila Prabhupada said, in due course of time, you will see Krishna face to face. Then all our problems will be solved. Hare Krishna. Anything more? Because we stop here. <laughs> Anything more? Anyone? Anil? Amit? Ritu? Amrita Rade? No problem. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful class. That was wonderful, Katha. Really nice. Okay, we'll see you on Saturday. Anil, you coming? Uh, yes, Prabhu. Not uh, yes. Yes. Don't yes, hesitate. Yes. Don't even <laughs> hesitate. Said, ah, I was kind of a bit of a hesitate. No, you come. You come. Yeah, you yeah. are in the fortunate position. You can come. Yes. Uh, Amit, are you coming on Saturday? Prabhu, I'm struggling this Saturday. You struggled um, already last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, I've got this prior engagement this Saturday, which I've committed to. Why are you committing yourself on a Saturday? Commit yourself on a Sunday. It's a meal. They're having a meal for a, um, a local <laughs> yes. um, animal rescue charity. A meal in a restaurant? No, no, it's a, it's a vegan meal. It's completely vegan. Um... And it's, it's 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 in a it's in a cafe, but it's all the proceeds will go to a local animal rescue. Who's cooking the meal? Who? Yes. Um, some people from the vegan community. We'll have to be quite careful. As devotees, we I know that will be a challenge for you, because you're very social and. Like said, but we generally we don't take food from cafes and restaurants because we yes, ask okay, there may be people from the Indian community, but what as a devotees is a food offered? Is a food offered? Will you offer the food? I don't think these people are spiritual, Prabhu. I think they, I mean, but they're making a good effort, you know. I think they don't, they okay. But the, no, they, the, they, they, no, they haven't blessed it. No, I don't, I don't think they've blessed it. But I mean, but the food is, it's not coming from any animal source at all. Okay, that's that's a good starting point. It's vegan. It's completely vegan. So it's okay. not harmed any animals at all. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's 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 a must. What about? Can you offer the food? We talked about that before. I can offer the food when I'm before I'm eating. Yes, Prabhu. I mean, yes, yes. Just I'm before you're eating, just before you're eating, even in your mind, you chant Hare Krishna three times mm -hmm. a mantra, and please, Krishna, accept his food. That will be. Then everybody's eating prasadam. You're but preaching. I don't guilty, Prabhu. I don't. You know, one thing if it's, it's strange. I don't mean when it's not been harmed in any way. Um, it's not prasadam. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, if you eat food without offering, you eat food for self, for your own enjoyment, 
then you verily are eating sin. What does that mean? You get some sinful reaction. Even so, it's vegan food. Without offering it to Krishna, it's you get sinful reaction. No question about it. But it's so easy. The food is served before anybody gets a chance of eating it. In your mind, you say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. It just takes a second. Please, Krishna, with a mood, please, Krishna, accept that food. And you're turning that food, which, without offering, just provokes some sinful reaction, and then you offer it to Krishna, and it is prasadam. And people make advancement. And you are the instrument of people making spiritual advancement. Because you are offering the food to Lord Krishna. It shouldn't be underestimated how powerful prasadam is. Do it. We talked about it before. When you do give vegan food out on the street, offer it. Offer it. It's offerable. That food is offerable. It's all vegan. There's no meat products in. So it can be offered to the Lord. But you have to do it. And the food is transformed from material elements into spiritual food. We can see the difference with our mundane eyes. It's, the food just looks as it has been before offering. But on the strength of the scripture and the spiritual master, we accept the food is now prasadam. It's the same thing as we do in the temple. The food looks like before the offering, it looks like the same, and after the offering. But it's prasadam after the offering, and it doesn't have to be put on the altar and say the prayers and wait for 10 minutes. All what it's needing is chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Even in your mind, you don't need to chant it loudly or half loudly. In your mind, you chant the Hare Krishna mantra. With the mood of Krishna, please accept his foodstuff. Can you do that, Amit? Yes, Prabhu, I can do that. Yes, I'm sure. It's, it's easy. It can be done. I have in many situations in the past, I have just done that. Maybe we have a session of speaking about prasadam. It's, it's just so important. Anil, you offering all your food stuff? You're cooking yourself now, right? Uh, yes, Prabhu, now. Uh, for, yes, now. <laughs> for these couple of weeks, yes. Yes, so. <laughs> yes but uh, not otherwise. Okay, here we stop. Thank you very much. See you on the other day. Thank Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Come on the other day, ritual. Yes, we will try. <laughs>